Hello. Gamma ray bursts are among the most energetic explosions in our universe. These bursts will only last seconds, quite literally over in a flash, but they also have detectable afterglows that can last for weeks. Around half of these afterglows are dark in the visible light wavelengths. Recently, the largest survey of dark gamma ray bursts was completed by a team working at the Max Planck Institute in Munich, and I spoke to Patricia Sade, who, along with the rest of her team, have finally managed to get to the bottom of these mysterious dark afterglows. Now, about 50% or so of these gamma ray bursts that we detect, we don't see any light coming in the optical or UV range. The importance of this paper was that it was able to use a new data set provided by this um, instrument, GROND, in order to be able to investigate this question about whether this was really due to a different phenomenon or due to the GRBs being incredibly distant sources or something else, for example, that you had something like dust in the way that was extinguishing the, the afterglow. Uh, you mentioned their GROND. So th- is this a new type of detector that you've been using for the first time? What is important and, and new about GROND is it's an, it's an instrument that first opened its shutters in 2007, and since then it's been following up every single gamma ray burst that we've seen. And what is important about GROND is that it has seven simultaneous filters. So it can look in seven different colours from the optical band um, up to the mid-infrared band, which is um, unusual for an instrument. Most other instruments, they can only look at one colour at a time. What the importance of being able to observe gamma ray bursts in all these different colours is that you can really look at the wavelength dependence of any attenuation of the light. So if you have dust causing a barrier to the light reaching us, or if you have gas causing a barrier, the imprint that's left on the light that reaches us will have a different shape. So absorption or extinction by dust um, are wavelength dependent. So therefore, GROND is really able to study that in detail because it has these seven colours. So the dust that was extinguishing the light, would that have been from the the host galaxy uh, where the the burst was originating from? Or was it something that, you know, possibly could have been whilst the light was travelling towards us? So the dust is is predominantly um, at the host galaxy as well as in our own Milky Way. That's where the extinction is happening. The extinction that happened in our own Milky Way, we understand that quite well now. So we're able to um, correct for that fairly trivially. So then what is left, the, the signature, the imprint that's then left on the, on the spectrum that we see, um, we can then infer is the dust from the actual gamma ray burst host as well. The actual d- dust that's um, along the line of sight between the host galaxy and ourselves is, is negligible and, and doesn't really affect the, the afterglow at all. How often do gamma ray bursts occur? Like how often were you able to use the detectors to look at these objects? The instrument that GROND uses at the moment, there is a satellite um, called SWIFT. That's a satellite that's equipped with a higher energy telescope in order to be able to detect the actual prompt blast that comes from the gamma ray burst. And it sends information about the location of this gamma ray burst very quickly to Earth. And that's when GROND um, then reacts and takes a look at the gamma ray burst. Now, SWIFT is detecting gamma ray bursts on the order of two a week or so. And so typically it depends on whether, you know, because it is on Earth, so there are constraints on which hemisphere um, the gamma ray burst has occurred, but typically we're we're able to follow up a a gamma ray burst once a week or once a fortnight or something like that. So how many gamma ray bursts did you look at for this study in particular then? So the, the criteria that we had in our sample was that we wanted only those gamma ray bursts that Grant had looked at within four hours of the initial explosion, and that left us with a sample of 39. What do you think is is important about, like, why do we need to know about gamma ray bursts? Well, both for cosmological reasons and actual the physics of the universe, gamma ray bursts can be crucially important. So the vast energies that are released in the gamma ray burst, that's extreme physics that's happening over here, uh, the production of a black hole and the energies that are emitted, uh, scientists are still finding it hard to understand how so much energy can be produced in such a short amount of time. So therefore, understanding um, the mechanism of a gamma ray burst is very important for this reason. If the reason why some gamma ray bursts don't have an optical afterglow is due to a different physical process, then that would tell us something about our understanding of the formation and death of massive stars. The fact that we've now found that our current understanding of how a gamma ray burst is formed, which is something similar to a supernova, for example, that tells us that we're on the right track on our understanding of massive star formation. But then also from um, a cosmological point of view, so gamma ray bursts 
occur at very, very large distances. We can see them fairly close by, but we've also seen some gamma ray bursts which occurred when the universe was only a fraction of its current age. If the large number of gamma ray bursts that don't have an optical afterglow is due to them being very far away, so that would have implications for what was happening in the very early universe and the galaxy formation and the star formation that was occurring at that time. But from this study, we found that actually the majority of these gamma ray bursts that don't have an optical afterglow needn't have occurred in the very early universe. They could have actually happened when the universe was 50% its current age. So this all has implications. Knowing when that gamma ray burst or when most gamma ray bursts happened um, through cosmic time, that holds a lot of information for us on understanding galaxy formation and, and star formation. That was Patricia Sade from the Max Planck Institute in Munich, whose paper on the origins of dark gamma rays was published this week in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics.